There's a reason old farmers used to harvest crops that seemed unstoppable long before modern fertilizers existed. They had a method that built soil health faster, increased crop yields dramatically, and cost next to nothing. It worked so well that by the early 1900s, it was quietly phased out when industrial fertilizer companies started pushing chemical alternatives. Today, most gardeners have forgotten it entirely, but this simple 19th century soil trick is still one of the most effective natural growth boosters you can use. It's not compost, it's not manure, and it doesn't require fancy equipment. It's fermented soil conditioning, a method based on microbial fermentation that naturally unlocks nutrients faster than most fertilizers ever could. The old farmers understood that soil is alive. In the 1800s, before synthetic fertilizers existed, farmers had to rely on biological activity to keep their fields productive. They knew that healthy soil wasn't just dirt, it was a living ecosystem. To feed their soil, they didn't just throw organic matter onto it and wait for decomposition. Instead, they pre-fermented it. They would take plant waste, straw, ash and animal manure. Mix it with a natural carbohydrate source like molasses or cooked grains and allow it to ferment under controlled moisture for about a week or two. The result was a living inoculant teeming with beneficial microbes that could be directly applied to soil or diluted for plant feeding. This was the origin of what we now recognize as bokashi or fermented compost, though back then it was just considered good farm sense. why this trick was abandoned and why it's time to bring it back. When chemical fertilizers became widely available in the early 1900s, they promised faster results with less work. They delivered nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium directly to plants, giving the illusion of instant productivity. The fermented soil method, though slower on paper, was far more sustainable. It fed the microbes that in turn fed the plants. Unfortunately, as farming became industrialized, this method was considered inefficient and phased out in favor of chemical control. What those companies never mentioned was that the microbial diversity this old trick created could regenerate soil indefinitely. Today, with soils worldwide losing organic matter and fertility, bringing back this 19th century approach is not just beneficial, it's necessary. The real science behind fermented soil conditioning. When organic matter ferments under low oxygen or anaerobic conditions, beneficial microbes, especially lactobacillus and yeast, break down complex plant materials into simpler forms like amino acids, organic acids, and natural enzymes. These compounds are immediately available to soil microbes and plants. The process releases very little carbon dioxide compared to regular composting, which means more carbon stays in your soil, improving structure and moisture retention. It also locks in nitrogen rather than letting it gas off. This makes it far more efficient than regular compost, where up to half the nitrogen can be lost during decomposition. In short, fermentation doesn't burn nutrients, it actually preserves them. Once applied to your garden, the fermented mix acts like a microbial inoculant, jump-starting life in even the most depleted soils. So, how do you make the 1800 soil ferment at home? You don't need barrels, chemicals or any complex gear for this, honestly. All you need are three basic ingredients, organic material, a carbohydrate source and a microbial starter. You can even make your own starter by fermenting rice water. Simply rinse one cup of rice with two cups of water. Let it sit covered with a cloth for two days until it smells slightly sour and then strain the liquid. That liquid contains wild lactobacillus bacteria, the same microbes old farmers relied on. Now, in a bucket or pit, mix three parts chopped green waste like grass clippings or vegetable peels, with one part brown material such as straw or dry leaves. Add a cup of rice water starter and a tablespoon of molasses or sugar to every five kilograms of material. Mix well until the entire pile feels moist but not dripping. Cover it tightly with a sack or lid to exclude air 
and leave it for seven to ten days in a shaded area. You'll know it's ready when it smells sweetly fermented, not rotten. To apply it, you simply mix one part of this fermented material with ten parts soil before planting. Or, if you prefer, dilute a handful in five litres of water and drench it around the base of growing plants every couple of weeks. The microbes will, you know, colonise the rhizosphere, converting organic compounds into bioavailable nutrients within just a few days. So, why does this method outperform chemical fertilisers in the long term? Well, fertilisers feed plants directly, but do nothing for soil structure or long-term fertility. Fermented soil, on the other hand, feeds the entire soil food web. The microbes improve root uptake efficiency, which means plants absorb more of the nutrients already present in your soil. In tests done by regenerative farmers, crops treated with fermented organic matter showed 30-40% to 40 faster growth rates, greener leaves and higher yields compared to those treated with MPK fertilizer alone. More importantly, the soil under those crops became darker, softer and, you know, held moisture longer. Another key advantage is nutrient security. Chemical fertilizers leach quickly with rain or overwatering, while fermented soil matter bonds nutrients into organic complexes that stay available longer. This method also neutralizes toxins, suppresses pathogens, and helps control soil-borne diseases like damping off and root rot naturally. So how do you maintain this process um, all year round? Once you start this practice, it becomes self-sustaining. You can collect your kitchen scraps weekly, ferment them in small batches, uh, and continuously feed your soil without ever needing to buy fertilizer again. During the rainy seasons, you can dig shallow pits to ferment directly in the ground. This prevents the loss of nutrients through runoff. And during the dry months, keep the mix moist with diluted rice water. Over time, your soil will turn dark, crumbly and full of earthworms, a clear sign that you've restored biological life to your land. In conclusion, old wisdom is indeed the key to new fertility. This 1800 soil trick wasn't banned because it failed. It was buried because it worked too well without profit for fertilizer companies. By reintroducing fermented soil conditioning, you're not just feeding plants, you're rebuilding living soil from the ground up. It's a return to natural farming wisdom that our ancestors practiced out of necessity, and it still outperforms many modern solutions. If you found this guide valuable, do share it with other serious gardeners who care about rebuilding their soil naturally. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to Soil Doctor for more practical, field-proven techniques that restore fertility, boost yields and build living soil without dependence on chemicals. Remember, the best fertilizer was never made in a factory. It's made right in your garden. Soil Doctor.